So today we're going to start framing the front gable end wall and we're going to discuss the importance of balloon framing this wall since it's going to be vaulted inside the cabin and why you should not build this wall in two parts as this could lead to very bad outcome. But before then let me update you on a few things. So first of all let's talk about the Monday counter which I haven't updated in a while. It is now sitting at 23 days. As a reminder that's the number of days assuming eight hours of work a day it took me to get to this point. I also raised the second wall just like I did with the first one everything went more or less smoothly once again I had to strap and pull the bottom plate to keep it in place before I could nail it just like I did with the first wall um, so here's actually a time lapse um, of the installation so you see how it actually went Now is the time to build the front gable and wall. It's gonna be 20 foot long, about 13 foot tall at its peak. Because my cabin will have a vaulted ceiling, you need to balloon frame this wall. Well, what is balloon framing, you might say? Well, it is when we make the stud continuous from top to bottom so that we can transfer the wind loads back to the floor and the roof. If we build it as a stacked wall, which is pretty much in two parts, as you can see here, we would create an inch here in the middle, which could lead to pretty bad outcome over time. The only way it would be okay to build it this way is if we had a flat ceiling in that case there wouldn't be an inch anymore because the bottom wall would be braced by the ceiling framing at the top so I'm not making this up it's actually something that's covered in the code as you can see here uh, at least in North Carolina where they really show you how they want you to build a wall when you're gonna have a vaulted area in your uh, cabin. This wall was a pain to plan for, especially that I do not have any experience building any gable and walls like these. So for that reason, I did my own roof spreadsheet that you can see here uh, with the nice sketch on the side. This will obviously be helpful once I, once I get to building the roof, but it also plays a role in planning for the stud height I will need for the balloon frame wall. Long story short, you have to select the roof slope you'll want as well as the width of your building, the height of your side walls, the width of your ridge beam and how much overhang you will want for your building. After that the spreadsheet will spit out a lot of valuable information about the rafter. The one here, the full length is quite important as you'll need to know and to make sure that you order the right size of your rafter. This will also give you the height of the ridge to your top plate. I mean we'll get to talk more about this once we get to framing the roof. Um, the one thing that matters now is that second spreadsheet right below here that calculates the height of my stud. So diagonal plate is the distance here uh, to the diagonal of the top plate. Then what I call BHFS is the height of the left side of the first stud. Then the height difference in each stud is the difference between this point and that point which is calculated based on the roof slope. And finally here you can enter any distance y and it will tell you the height of your stud. So using that I calculated the height of my nine continuous studs based on their distance which I got from my drawing. So playing with those numbers in that spreadsheet definitely made me feel much more confident in building this wall by myself and feeling like I have a slight clue uh, how I'm going to proceed. So you can see behind me that I ended up putting my top between the two walls. Actually it has really worked great at protecting the structure against rain which we've had plenty of. So you can see here, I didn't show you this, but I already went ahead and moved all my wood. Uh, da, da, da. Trying to clean this up a little bit. So you can see here, that's why I'm so adamant about trying to protect it as much as possible. Even with all the effort I put together, see like this definitely has been messed with by the, you know, the water and the, the ice and the snow and everything we got. So that's why I really have to keep moving and dry this place up as soon as possible. So the first step is locking my bottom plate five and a half inches from that edge. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So now I'm going to uh, use a chuck line. So it's nice you can use a nail to put it in place. Still have some of the sheathing sticking out just a tad bit. Uh, 
So if you've looked at the plan, if you paid attention, uh, in the middle, I'm gonna have my door opening. So that's where I'm gonna break the top, the bottom plate because I will end up cutting it anyway to fit the, the doll. So that's my perfect spot to break the, to break it off. So we're gonna start by, need to measure the exact uh, middle. 19, one and one eight. This is my midpoint. <laughs> Okay, so now we can go ahead and uh, lay them down. Ah, see, it's not gonna, I'm gonna have to cut it a little tiny bit. Perfect. Okay, so you know how this goes. We're just gonna go ahead and uh, attach the plate in place. So just like we did on the previous wall, I'm just gonna place, mock up all my studs here on the bottom plate. I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna go in too much detail because we did exactly the same thing for all these walls. So if you wanna know more, go back to those videos. You can see here, this time I went ahead and actually measured everything on my drawing. So I don't have to do any kind of mass. I just have to read it, mock it up and uh, move forward. This is the end of the opening, so that's king, king, jack, jack. Oh man, this is so easy now that I've done it before. And so what I'm gonna do is I made this wall completely symmetrical so I can start from the end to uh, do the studs from the other side. Okay, so as you can see here, I just knocked all my studs just like I did. Here I had a little bit of an issue, so I had to move everything by an eighth of an inch. So obviously it's great to plan all your dimensions, but obviously sometimes you'll have a little bit of a surprises. So you just adapt to what the cabin actually looks like. So now what I'd like to do is I want to draw on the ground, I mean on the subfloor, the outline of my wall. So I'm going to locate exactly where my ridge beam is going to be. I know the size of my ridge beam and I'd like to, uh, you know, um, probably use a chalk line to mock up this just to kind of make, it, make me, you know, give me a feeling of the size of the wall. And that will help obviously once I put my studs, making sure that everything fits into place. So let's see if I can find out a way, uh, you know, to locate all that stuff and run some chalk line. We'll see. So if you're interested in getting the plan for this cabin, including the gable and wall that you see right here and that I've been using, please make sure to go to my website, which is the DIYCabinGuy.com, uh, I think slash blueprint. There you will be able to uh, enter your email and then you will receive an email with the PDF. Uh, for everyone else that already got the drawings, because I've updated this gable and plan, I will resend an updated version of the PDF. So if you've already signed up, you don't need to do it again. I will make sure to send it again. Here's what I did. I went back and marked uh, my center line from wall to wall. And then I went back and got my laser because I figured it could be a good tool to, uh, you know, now I can kind of, uh, you know, have this line and I'm probably going to take advantage of this to uh, mark it up this way. Based on my drawings, uh, right now I want to count. I want to locate the bottom of the, the ridge beam, and so thanks to the, those drawings, I was able to actually pull it out. So 152.6 inches uh, is actually from the bottom plate all the way to the bottom of my um, ridge beam. So I can touch my tape measure. I don't know any any other way. 152 and 5 eighths. So in order to uh, in order to get this point all the way up here, I just have to measure the height of my wall. In my case, I have eight foot, one inch and five eight. So that's exactly that dimension that I'm gonna measure from here, my mock, all the way to wherever it falls on this wall. That's in the way. 
Okay, it's eight. Ah! Gosh. There has to be a way to attach those in an easier fashion. This right here. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So that's the bottom of my of my ridge. I know my ridge is gonna be um, three and a half inch wide. So that's what I'm about. That's what I'm about to draw. And then, but we can draw the side. And so you see, I'm trying to draw this this line here, this upper line. And obviously it's not really, you know, matching with the bottom of the ridge or anything. So I did calculate this distance here. This is actually, if you remember my spreadsheet, I printed it out and actually it's, uh, where is it? Da -da -da. Bottom ridge to rafter here. So this distance here, which is 1.4 inches, is indeed uh, the distance between the bottom of the rafter and the bottom of the ridge, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, that's one and seven sixteen. So now I can run my string from this point to the point over there where I measured the height of the wall. Okay, let's see if this is gonna work. Okay, so so get it pretty tight. Oh well, that should be good. Okay, I'm gonna say that I'll do it. Okay. Whoa. Ooh, I'm getting pretty good at this. So now you're kind of getting an idea of what this wall is gonna look like. <laughs> I mean, potential, I mean, the wall is gonna go all the way to here when it's laid down, which is, look, I'm only like three or four feet from the edge of the cabin. So yeah, again, it's gonna be a pretty massive wall. 126 and then 1316, so. So here's kind of the challenge now, which is something we're gonna keep running into uh, with all the studs and everything, is that we're gonna have to cut all sorts of weird, you know, little angles at the end of each stud and also at the end of this guy. So you can see here, uh, you know, pretty much it's gonna go something, well, I mean, I have to like measure it, but we're gonna have to cut a piece here. Um, so I know from my, again, my super cool spreadsheet uh, tells me that, where is it? Here, I calculated the eye difference in each stud is three quarter of an inch. So I know that if I take, if I measure three quarter here, so if I measure three quarter here, then I can, I can pretty much just do this. So theoretically that's how it should be. But the question is, is yeah, how do you cut this, you know, to have like a really nice cut with that angle. So I still need to figure that out. Same thing on the other side. Okay. Got the first one. Whoa. Huh. So the question is, is it gonna fit? What do you think? Uh, nope, that's not good. It's too short. Ah, I don't know what I did wrong. I did all my calculation. Why? And yeah, look at here. We're like quarter of an inch. Maybe I know why. Well, let me think about it for a second. I'll let you know. <laughs> so here's the situation. I've kind of figured it out is that for better or for worse, um, the spacing between my walls, it gets a little longer, uh, meaning that the spacing back there where my bottom plate is, the spacing is getting a little longer here by about a quarter of an inch on each side. On each side. So half an inch total, which kind of sucks. Um, it's probably gonna be a problem when I put the rafters down, but there's no way I can change that now. It's too late. Um, if I had known better, whenever I was building these walls, when I mocked, <laughs> when I mocked my line, I should have checked that the measurement was consistent, uh, you know, for the whole cabin. Um, I mean, again, half an inch off, we'll see. We'll see how bad it is. I'm sure I'll be able to like make it work, but now it just, you know, now I just have to do a lot more tweaking uh, to make it work with that discrepancy. So 
you live, you learn, I guess. That's, that's how it goes. I went back and just uh, did a longer piece, kind of uh, randomly added half an inch and did the same thing on the other side. They're still a little too long, uh, you know, because I just said the walls are farther away. So I need to leave clearance on both sides because if I go flush, then I will not be able to raise the wall because I'm gonna be able, I'm gonna end up hitting something, uh, which would be absolutely terrible. So here is my next uh, trouble or thing to figure out. When I'm gonna lay my stud, all the previous walls, I was able to mark up both my bottom plate and my top plate, meaning that when I was putting the wall together, it was very easy to make sure that my studs were actually perfectly uh, straight, meaning that they were matching the marking on the bottom plate and the top plate. But with this gable wall, I don't have an easy way of marking up those pieces here, which I guess are considered my top plate. So how do I make sure that when I place my stud, you know, they're gonna be straight and they're not, you know, kind of at weird angles. So what I thought about doing is I'm going to remove that bottom plate with all the marking and I'm going to set it up here somewhere before we get to that crazy angle. And then I'm going to mark my stud here. So I marked up here that center line. So I know that if I, I know if I put it on my center line, I will be good and I will be matching the same uh, measurements as I had. Uh, so here's a little something I put together to help me out. It's literally just like two pieces of wood just held together and I'm gonna use that so that when I slide it here and you know see this line I can just go ahead and uh, I just gonna go ahead and like mark this up. Second day working on this wall. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and uh, cut some studs and see if that fits. So again, I'm basing myself of my drawings and my spreadsheet. Um, you know, the spreadsheet as I was showing you is giving me all the size of the studs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut maybe the first two and see if it fits in the real world because maybe, you know, maybe I made some mistakes. So that's gonna be a great way to check uh, that spreadsheet. So those measurements that I got from my spreadsheet, you gotta keep in mind that this is the measurement from the bottom of the stud to the lower uh, height. So I have to add another three quarter of an inch to that measurement, uh, which is gonna be kind of that, you know, that cut. And again, that three quarter of an inch comes also from that spreadsheet. And that's also based on the uh, you know, the roof slope that I'm using. So keep that in mind. So 94 and 716 for the first stud. And then we can add that three quarter. Is this gonna work? I don't know. And this should fit here. You can see I get a pretty decent uh, fit. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna go and keep going and see if it keeps uh, fitting. Okay, second moment of truce. Um, that's not bad. Yeah, oh wow, that's actually pretty good. Oh, this is exciting. Spreadsheet might be working after all. So this is actually part of the first window now. So this is actually, yeah, this is one of my first king stud. So this is starting to be serious now. So you can see here, I've installed the first fall studs. Those are the only one right now that go all the way up. After that, you can see that my jack stud will be flat at the end. So I just have to measure those height of those two jack stud and cut them straight. So that'll be easy because, well, it's a straight cut. I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make my headers. So as far as the header go, I'll have three of them, you know, each window, the dawn. So first header, three foot six. So just as a reminder, each header is uh, gonna be made of 
three plies of uh, two by 10 and I'm sandwiching those pieces of plywood that I just cut again. I think two by eight or even two by six would have been more than enough, but I ordered the two by 10 and I drew the two by 10. So I'm just gonna go with it. Even though this is making for pretty heavy header. I'm just gonna have some of those to prevent any movement. And then bring my good friend, See if I can take this together. Whoa. I repeated the same process and I got my three headers done because you know, might as well do it now while I was cutting all that OSB and all those uh, two by 10. So don't go anywhere. Please make sure to check the following episode as you will find out if I can manage to finish this gable and wall. Uh, you know, it's a lot to learn, but we will see. I will see you in the next one.